we now move on to discuss some applications of sampling. Obviously, sampling is required if we want to have a continuous time signal in stored on a computer because a continuous time signal has an infinite number of values and computers can't store an infinite number of values. We have to get it down to some finite list. So now we have the sampling theorem, which allows us to replace a continuous time signal by an equivalent discrete time signal that contains all the information of the original signal. And now instead of working with the original continuous time signal, we're going to learn how to equivalently work with and manipulate this discrete time signal. So now we just have to process really what's just a list of numbers because we've taken this continuous time thing and gotten it down to just a list of samples. Another thing we're going to look at in this section is something called digital signaling. Given that I have this list of numbers, how can I take that information and embed it in a signal for either transmission somewhere or storage on a hard disk, something like that. So we'll talk about what we call digital signaling, and that's the first thing we're going to get into here. So the first type of kind of digital signaling or modulation that we want to talk about is what's called pulse modulation. The basic idea here is that we're going to take the list of numbers that we've obtained by sampling a continuous time signal, and we're going to use those values to change pulse characteristics. So pulses have a variety of parameters. They have an amplitude, they have a width, they have a position that can all change as a function of the value of the sample. If you do that, if you take that list of numbers and use those values to change characteristics of a pulse, we call that pulse modulation. And there's a lot of different forms depending on which characteristic of the pulse you decide to embed the information in. For instance, if you keep the width and position of the pulse fixed, but you change the amplitude of the pulse to vary with the value of the sample, then we call that pulse amplitude modulation, or PAM. If you leave the amplitude of the pulse fixed and you keep the position of the pulse fixed, but you change the width of the pulse as a function of the sample value, so very negative sample values might have a very thin width, very positive large sample values might get turned into a pulse that has a large width. We call that pulse width modulation. And then finally, if you keep amplitude and width the same, but change where in time the pulse arrives, we call that pulse position modulation. So all of these right here have to do with changing the characteristic of a pulse, either its amplitude, width, or position. This last one here, pulse code modulation, that one's a little bit more complicated, and we're actually going to focus on that in the next video. This whole second row of bullets here under sampling applications has to do really primarily with pulse code modulation, so we'll get into PCM here in just a minute. One thing that's nice about pulse modulation is it en enables something called time division multiplexing, or TDM. If I have multiple users all trying to share the same physical channel, which is some, you know, something physical like the air, that everybody's trying to radiate wirelessly over the air, or maybe it's a piece of copper or a piece of fiber optic, if I've turned my information into pulses, I can share the channel in time. So maybe you get to transmit a pulse, and then I get to transmit a pulse, and the next person gets to transmit a pulse. Sharing the channel in kind of a time division sense is called TDM. And if you're embedding information into pulses in this way, doing that is relatively straightforward. And it lets us share the channel among users. Or another way of thinking about it is I can transmit several different signals on the same channel. I don't have to have a fiber optic piece of fiber for every single person. We can all use the exact same piece of fiber to split things up in time via TDM. All right, let's just look at some kind of cartoons of pulse modulation that we discussed, PAM, PPM, and pulse width modulation. So let's say I had some continuous time signal X of T and I'm going to take samples of this at the sample times indicated by these dashes. And then I'm going to take those values, so the values of the samples are the values of the continuous time signal at those points in time. And I'm going to embed that information in the pulse characteristic. So here with PAM, what I'm doing is I'm letting the amplitude of the pulse vary with the sample value. So as my sample value gets larger, the amplitude of my pulses get larger. And as my samples get more negative, 
my pulses get more negative. So that's what PAM would look like if I encoded information using PAM. Pulse position modulation is a little bit different. All of these widths of the pulses are exactly the same. All of their amplitudes are exactly the same. What's changing is when the pulse arrives relative to the sampling point. So if I have a very positive sample value, I let my pulse arrive early. So this one was the most positive sample value, so it arrived the most early relative to this dash. As we go negative, I arrive later and later with respect to the dash. So the position pulse with respect to where it's expected tells us whether the sample was negative or positive and how negative and positive it was. Finally, pulse width modulation does what you would think. The amplitude is staying constant, the position is staying constant. We just stretch out the width of the pulse as a function of sample value. So very positive sample values have very wide pulses. Very negative sample values have very small width pulses. So once we agree on this scheme, if I tell you exactly how to map width to sample value, as you observe these pulse widths at your receiver, you can back out what the original sample value was. So that includes our introductory discussion of different types of pulse modulation, PAM, PPM, and PWM. In the next video, we'll start discussing pulse code modulation.